Next, we're going to set up the, the structure of the layout here so that we can start forecasting. The first thing we want to do is reduce the number of uh, num the amount of numbers that we see on the page. Easy way to do that is to click on the column. We click on the U here. Uh, carry that over to double A column. I'll go to Format Column and Hide. That gives us more space. The next thing we want to do is set up our forecast area. So I've done that here by forecasting in the next two, three, four, five, six years. Now, what I'm going to do is talk about how we build a revenue forecast. Now, what most people think about when they want to build a forecast is maybe they think something's going to grow by 10%. If the revenue is going to grow by 10%, we can start by making a formula. We make a formula by entering the equal sign. You can see my equal sign up in the top left here where you can see the uh, formula bar and I'm going to highlight the uh, the revenue from 2009 and I'm going to multiply that times 1 plus 10 percent or 0.1 the result of that is that I'm going to get this number 25019 now of course if I was to change that instead to, of, of 0.1 if I was to change that to 0 we'd have no growth, we just have the same number. If I was to change it to 1, we'd have a doubling. But for right now, let's keep it at 0 0.01, 10%. 10%. Now, what's wrong with that? The first thing that you'll see is wrong with that is that in order for uh, someone to understand what were the assumptions made for 2009, or sorry, 2010's revenue, you'd have to go inside the cell. So one way to resolve this is to do something such as entering or inserting a row and putting your 10% here. If you put your 10% here, then instead of referencing the 10% there, you'd reference it here. Now, that has some strengths. The first strength is that you can see it now. Uh, you don't have to go into the formula, but the problem is, is that you're going to end up with a lot of inserted lines going down through your model, where you'd prefer to have a very clean model going down. So the reality is that's probably not the best solution, so let's delete that and let's not do that. A uh, better way to do that is just to undo what we did. So let's undo what we did, and now we're back to our original. Now the, the best way to do this, from my opinion, is to split the screen. Now some people split the screen, well before we do that let's just go down and let's set up a forecasting section down below. So I've set it up down here, the forecasting section starts where this yellow line is, or gold line, and we start off with revenue growth. The first thing we want to do is we want to calculate the revenue growth from the prior years. So the formula for that just looks at this year, 2009, divided by 2008 minus 1 times 100. That gives us the prior growth in revenue. We want to do that across each year so we get a picture of where things have been. Then what we're going to do is put in a number. In this case, I'm going to put in 10. Now you'll notice that I use 10. I could use 0.1, which we've talked about up above, and I could actually apply a percent sign to that. But the problem is, is that you end up with lots of percent signs when you really don't need it. We could just put a percent sign right here and we could just change that format. In this case, I'm going to just format, use the format painter and just copy back over. But the benefit of doing it with just 10 instead of 0.10 is that you can see and easily adjust that 10. Now, what we can then do is go back up to our formula up here and instead of referencing, so you'll notice I press F2, which allows me to enter into the formula. And without, basically what I'll do is rather than entering it there, I'm going to go down to our forecasting section and I'm going to highlight this 10 but because I do have it as a 10 I'm going to have to divide it by 100 in order to get it in percentage terms and that's going to give us our sales growth now if we have sales growth of 10 percent across each year as I have right here then all we have to do is copy that over and what I'm doing here is pressing control C to copy and then uh, shift control right and that takes me all the way over and then I'm pressing control R or sorry control V to to paste it that ends a section of forecasting there's one last bit that we want to look at and that is 
we've got a problem that we've got to bounce back and forth between down below and up above. How do we resolve that? Well, some people go to, for instance, this cell, AB5, and then they go and they use something called freeze pane. And that will freeze things so that it will be stuck at that 2006 and it will be stuck at this level if I was to go over to the right. Now, I don't like freeze pane because it doesn't have a lot of flexibility. So I'm going to take out the freeze pane and I'm going to use a split. And all you have to do is go up to the top right here and we can get a horizontal split. And I can go to the bottom right here and get a vertical split. The benefit of this is that we're quite flexible in the way that we can use this. I can work up here. I can work in any of the quadrants. In this case, we don't need the vertical split. So I'm going to double click on it and get rid of it. And now what we've got is a forecasting structure here with the, the spreadsheet up above or the financial statement up above and the variables down below. That ends this section.